Amazon pulls out of the New York HQ. So Amazon was meant to launch HQ, HQ, HQ2. They had the big... It was really strange in general because they had this massive kind of American Idol um, competition where they went all across where they, um, you know, where they... Op it was like an open invitation, open kind of, you know, competition where these different states across the, U across the US were petitioning for Amazon to build their new headquarters in their state. The whole idea behind it was that when Amazon come along, they provide loads of jobs, infrastructure rises, they invest some money in the state, blah, 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 right? So everyone kind of wanted to have that injection of cash into their state and everyone positioning for it. And it seemed like it would be a great opportunity for a startup or for one of these companies to really tap into middle America, right? Because much like the UK, where a lot of people say that the Brexit issue happened because, you know, for the most part, politics only really centered around talking to people that were in London, Manchester, Liverpool, and more the, the major cities, and not people that actually lived within kind of, you know, the rest of the UK outside of those big cities. The same issue happens in the US, right? Where most of these manufacturing jobs that were taken away through automation or through just, you know, advances in modern technology, it'd be great if a startup could kind of recognize how much influence or how much they had to, or how much um they aided or how much they kind of the role they played in the kind of demise of those industries and try to kind of fix those issues by providing more jobs by reinvesting back into those kind of states by kind of opening up an office in those kind of places and providing some jobs right of course some of these jobs won't initially go to local residents anyway because they're going to be software-based jobs but there will be an opportunity for some people to come and work and to kind of gain um gainful employment and also just the fact that there's going to be uh, people working in these big offices it, it's an opportunity for businesses to spring up all around that area whether they be cafes or restaurants or that malarkey so it, was, it seemed like a good idea right but there was a lot of resistance i saw in general online too about it because it seemed like you know it seemed like a weird convoluted way for amazon to collect loads of data on these states um that would all that would ultimately um get fed back into the amazon machine and allow them to kind of make you know millions and billions and billions of dollars um by tapping into the needs of that particular state or within understanding what's actually going on through algorithms all that sort of malarkey but you know sometimes you know um you'd rather you know it's kind of maybe a price willing you're willing to pay in order to kind of provide jobs for your constituents whatever it transpires and in the end what amazon do they end up picking fucking new york to, to put the headquarters everyone's kind of bummed out but you know again uh, the people in the area of new york where they wanted to put the headquarters at were really happy about it and it seemed like again a great idea and then but then you know with the rise of politicians such as like alexandria ocasio cortez democratic socialists they were very vehemently against it because amazon gets amazing tax breaks um, and the incentive for you know the state to give them the tax break is that the tax break would then invite would then give them more opportunity to come in and provide more jobs blah 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 they might there's like a golden handshake involved in those kind of things but you know if you're a socialist you don't want them to get tax breaks you think they should they should pay um, what everyone else pays and of course amazon didn't want all that trouble didn't want that stress didn't want didn't want to pay the money so they decided to pull out and that was a big kind of conversation happening right around like what um, what has happened, what transpired, whether or not Azalea Cortez uh, cut off her nose despite her face and kind of maybe fucked over um, residents of New York in general in the long run because now, you know, it's going to dissuade other startups from kind of coming in and setting up shop. But Cara Swisher from Recode had a really good interview on the New York Times that I'm going to kind of try and read out here that really spoke about it really well. And um, it's a quote um, on New York Times. I've, maybe I might have um, gone over my allowance for free articles on here i'm always reading articles on the new york times let's see what happens blah, 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 blah. load it up load it up so car switcher from recode i'm a big fan of her she's got amazing podcasts she interviews loads of influential startup guys and gals but yeah i've run over my allowance but anyway um this is the article on the screen it's called amazon is interested in making the world a better place um and the quote that i kind of pulled off from here that i'm going to read out to you guys is as follows um, Carl says something that really kind of resonated with me, and it says here: um, at many New Yorkers had cheered on the opposite, cheered on the opposition, assuming that it might persuade um, Amazon to strike a better deal with the city. They mostly agreed that more tech jobs would be good for New York, good salaries and more money for retailers, restaurants, and the real estate industry. More than more than bad gentrification congestion, but no one wanted to end up like San Francisco. Uh, which is becoming modern hellscape even as internet companies build their airy hqs and become even richer their their tax giveaways only exasperate income inequality and offered no solutions which is very true right um san francisco is the home of loads of tech startups and love and the actual you know the overall tech uh 
um, the startup ecosystem kind of lives in San Francisco, but it's also got one of the highest rates of homelessness of any kind of, you know, state in the US. Um, Amazon certainly could have been more creative in proposing some um, bombs for those ills in New York. For example, it could have entered into the core public-private partnership to fix the junkie subways. Its employees would have ridden and perhaps the new innovations. You know, making the world a better place. No, I guess not. Which is really true because... I think with the the with the um, with the documentary on if it is it Terramos, which has come out recently with a documentary about Fire Festival with the stuff that I've gone through with people that I owe and Nicholas Oliver being a fucking fraud and a scam artist. I think people are going to see more and more over the last few years with the stuff that's happening with Facebook. I think the misses the kind of um the allure, the kind of like starry eyed look people had with startup founders is slowly starting to ebb away. We're starting to see that effectively they are like you know startup founders are and I kind of have more have more sim have more have more in similar with like the standard big corporate bosses that make gazillions off the stock market as they do with you know um yeah they they're more similar with them as opposed to like the general public right because the, the promise of these startups was that they were gonna make the world a better place right um famously uh, Google's um, I think motive or mo was like don't be evil. But over time, with the rise in influence, the rise in power, the more money, the more um, um, influ- uh, kind of influences that are kind of driving their decision making processes, those things kind of like fell by the wayside and people got to see that these guys just want out there to make money. The bottom line is that they have to justify their existence by making money. They have to justify their, you know, the amount of money they've invested. They've got people that are counting on them. So there's other plays at work that are kind of really dictating these actions that they do. But ultimately, they don't really have your best interest in mind. You know, the general public or, you know, even employees that work there, right? I think the idea that you could go into a startup and you can make your own way, you can make a change, grab a project by the scrap of the neck and kind of like drive a project forward is great. But on the flip side, you are in a you're involved in an industry in a business that is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly um, um, reactive, right? It, it's, it's very knee jerk. Um, it's very dependent on investment. Some of these businesses or some of these companies are not very are not generating any money, right? They just spend loads of money. Um, Snapchat being a good example, right? They burn through loads of amounts, cash after cash after cash, and just rely on advertisers coming in and pumping money in to kind of offset the fact that they don't actually make any any actually any any money right they try to do the snap spectacles but that didn't really uh kick off so people are seeing that their business don't really work that well they come into you know um they come into states and try or boroughs or uh, locations of cities um they lobby for tax exemptions in order to kind of circumvent and navigate some stuff in order to come in and get gain some favors and set up shop and then they don't reinvest into the local community, which is maybe difficult to do because most of the jobs that they are um, advertising for call for a certain level of acumen, a certain level of intelligence. And some people just might not have it or ability or able to learn, whatever it may be. But it does seem like the allure of a startup coming into your city and setting up shop has completely evaporated. And no one sees them as like these, you know, geniuses anymore. Even maybe, maybe it goes back as far as back as Steve Jobs. When that old biography came out, people saw how shitty of a guy he was. It, the kind of a lot of Steve Jobs kind of dim, kind of dim somewhat. Obviously, to the, most of the Steve Jobs loyalists out there, they won't give a fuck. But people got to see like, oh, this guy was actually a bit of a bad dude, right? Even though he made this amazing phone and created this amazing iPad and this laptop and this iPod, like he was a bad guy to his employees, and that was something that was a bit like you know, it took people um, back a little bit. And we've seen it happen again and again. And of course, with the whole um, Fire Festival thing with the Billy McFarlane stuff, we saw that. So I think in general, this Amazon HQ is maybe a watershed moment in that I think more starters are going to have to be socially aware more and not just like, you know, um, have it as just one of their selling points. It's going to have to be something that they actually do. They actually try to make the world a better place. And I think the way to make the world a better place is to start locally. Right. I think they have their ambitions are a little bit too far fetched. Um, and I think they maybe over egg their um, influence. They over egg their importance. For the most part, most startups don't really matter. Right? If they disappear tomorrow, no one would fucking care. But I think what they can do is start by kind of addressing the issues that are around their local community and taking an active role in making their community a better place. You know, like I've worked in community managing jobs for the most part, and they generally just are limited to the people that use your app or your service online or via the app. But it would be great if community management actually met actually meant going out there and talking to the community in and around your place of work and where you actually are situated at and having that personal connection with the people in and around there and seeing what you can provide for them what you can do for them again it's a very um it's a very um 
it's a very uh the 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 far it's maybe it's a little bit far fetched to say that and I guess it probably doesn't serve their bottom uh their bottom line. But I think that active participation, like real participation, is something that's really needed. And I think if they want to gain favor with the public, if they want to gain tax exemptions, I think people don't really care if they do get tax exempt. But I think if they're not, if they get tax exemptions and they're not really giving back to the community, then I'm not really shocked that um, uh, New York residents decided to like give Amazon the boot or to pressure them until they left. Again, maybe in in the long run, they might really feel the consequence of this, and it might have ram- it might have some unintended consequences that we don't really see now. But I think in general, it is maybe a bit of a sea change and a bit of a cultural shift. And maybe starters will have to look in the mirror and see that they have to do a bit more for their um, community that they're trying to tap into. Again, it's a very, um, it's a very, um, it's something I'm hoping that happens. That probably won't happen because most of these guys don't give a fuck. But um, it'd be great if someone did give a fuck in general. But hey, we can only hope, we can only wish.